Good morning to all of you from the Mount Harmony Missionary Baptist Church, to all of our families and friends, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Just a blessing to be with you all this morning, especially to our pastor, Dr. Robert Hanley, he and his family especially, to the Barnes family especially, and those other families who have lost loved ones we pray especially for you this morning it is indeed a blessing for us to be here today to share with you a word of god that he has shared throughout the week uh, i would like to share with you this morning from the book of james the second chapter and i want to just read a verse for your hearing the 17th verse it's James, the second chapter, the 17th verse. It says, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Let me read it one more time for you. It says, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. And I just want to talk a little bit this morning about working faith, working faith. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you would pray with me this morning. Oh, merciful God, it is me, humble servant, once again, Father, thanking you for yet another opportunity to share this, your word, with these, your people. Pray now, Father, that you might remove me from the scene, that these, your people, might have a vision of you, as you hang out here on the old Calvary's cross. Bread of heaven, feed us until we won't know more. It is in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. A working faith. Pastor Hanley has been dealing uh, in the past few weeks with James and with, 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 with Lazarus, excuse me, and, and his relationship with Jesus, both he and his sisters, Mary and Martha. And it's been mainly with their having faith in that Jesus would step in and raise Lazarus from the dead. I've been kind of dealing with that personally as I think about, you know, what does having faith really look like? You know, God has been dealing with me on the fact that there are some things in life that he is just waiting on me to grow in faith such that he can bring those things to pass. And I'm, I'm quite sure this morning I'm not by myself when, when I say that, you know, there are some things that we are waiting on God to do, but there are also some things that to do. And that is to have faith in the fact that he will bring it to pass. I want to suggest to you this morning that our faith has a lot to do with the blessings that God brings to our lives. So as I kind of think and ponder across that as, as I listen to pastor over the weeks as, he's proud, as, as he prayerfully uh, preached to us concerning having faith, and I kind of looked back and wanted to talk with James this morning and, and let him kind of talk to us and speak to our spirit on what does having a, a working faith, a living faith, really look like. Now, for a point of clarity, though, I need to say this. James in the second chapter and the 17th verse is not dealing with faith from a point of salvation. Let me say that again. He is not dealing with faith from a point of salvation. Many a times we get this so mixed up, this particular verse mixed up and saying that uh, 
if, if there's no faith, then there's no salvation or, or, or something to, to that to that nature. But listen, let me say this to you. Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, underline that part right there, believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. That is a heartfelt faith that Paul is referring to there. That is, that, that you have nothing to work. That, that faith secures salvation, period. Okay? I needed to clarify that for somebody this morning. Listen, so James is not pointing to, the, to, a, to a working faith in that, in, in that particular fashion in terms of salvation. As a matter of fact, Paul had already cleared that up when he said, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Listen, I'm paraphrasing this morning. Not as a result of works that no one may boast. Listen, it's not about your works when it comes to salvation. Salvation is secured already. So I'm talking about, and, and James is talking about here, listen, those of us who say that we are already saved, okay? So, so even so faith, if it had not worked, is dead being alone. So once again, I ask the question, what does living faith, working faith, what does that look like? Well, if you'll back up a couple of verses there, James gives us uh, an illustration. He says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and then and, and then one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Listen, what, what James is saying there is, listen, you had an opportunity to, to illustrate or to demonstrate your faith in God, but you missed it. You missed it. How many times have we been faced with such an opportunity? But even on a greater scale, God has presented us with opportunities to demonstrate our faith in him, and we've missed that. My brothers and sisters this morning, I, I myself, I, I, I know that I have missed some opportunities to demonstrate my faith in God simply because I just, uh, I, I, I just, I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready. So listen, let, let me help you by helping myself. Let me share with you this morning three characteristics of a living faith such that any time that we are, are, are from this point forward, that we are faced with such an opportunity to, to demonstrate that faith, we don't miss it anymore. Can I do that with you this morning? Listen, let me, let, let's, the first one is, Faith works through love, okay? Faith works through love. Now, if, if, you're, if you're taking notes with me this morning, jot down this scripture, and I want you to go back and take a look at it later, but I'm going to share it with you this morning to illustrate to you how, for, how faith works through love. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verses 4 through 8, and I'm going to read it from the New Inter International Version this morning because I like the wording that is there. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes always perseveres love never fails now listen when you read that i want you to think back in your mind when you've had to had to had to deal with an issue between you and and someone else or you and something else and 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 particularly in family issues uh husband and wives uh parents and their children uh brothers and sisters and 
uh, on down through the family line. Listen, there are some times, even on our jobs, when we've had to look beyond the person in order to move past what we need to move past in order to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Listen, relationships don't grow because every day is good. Can I share that with somebody this morning? Listen, there are going to be problems, in, especially when you're in relationships one with another. But what we must learn to do is learn to love in spite of, and you can't learn, in, you can't love in spite of if you're focused on that person. Our focus must be on Jesus Christ. That's where faith comes in. We must understand that faith must be there in order for us to say whatever you have done to me or whatever I have done to you, I'm, I'm able, I want to look beyond that. Because God says we ought to love one another. And, and, and if you can do that, and when you can do that, your faith begins to show and sprout, and, and you can move beyond where you are into a greater day, a greater relationship, a repaired relationship. You can do that. Not because your faith is in that person, but because your faith is in Jesus Christ. It gets tough, my brothers and sisters. I know it does. I've been there. Uh, not on just one occasion, but on several occasions. You know, we have to, sometimes we have to be able to look beyond ourselves. We mess up. Can I share that with somebody this morning? And, and simply because we know that we mess up, we have to allow room for other folk to mess up. And you can't do that if you don't have a faith in something way greater than yourself. Amen. So listen, faith works through love. Not only does it work through love, faith must continue to grow. This one is so important, I had to get two verses I need to share with you. Second Corinthians 5 and 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And then 2 Peter 3 and 18 says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen, let me let me have a let me share an illustration with you this morning. I hope that many of you can relate to. Listen, uh, how, how many how many of you listening to me this morning? How many of you work out? You have a regimen. Uh, you you may run a certain number of miles per day. You may uh, lift a few weights every now and then. You may do one or two sit ups a day. You may uh, do some push ups one or two a day. Uh, 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 but but you have some type of, of, of exercise regimen that you go through at least two or three or four times during the week. Now, I don't mean to break your spirit, but let me share this with you this morning. As you exercise, I need you to think about something. No one really cares what you do or how you do it. They could care less if you run three miles, five miles a week. They could care less uh, if you're in the gym two or three times a week. They could care less. They don't care anything about what you do. I hate to break that to you this morning, but guess what? Even though they don't care about what you do, there's no doubt they cannot miss the end results of what you do. Can I get a witness on that this morning? Listen, I was at a, I was at a, I was at a function about a week ago, and 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 a young man walked up to me. He said, "Man, what you what you doing? You 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 look like you've been working out." Listen, he had no idea. He could care less that I've been working out, but he could see that I had been working out. Listen, let me tell you, his his, his faith is the same way. When you're exercising, if anybody out there knows what I'm talking about. When you're exercising and you look in the mirror, you almost get frustrated because it don't look like what you're doing is working. But I, I trust, trust me on this. Keep doing what you're doing because even though you don't recognize it, somebody else is going to recognize it somewhere down the road. Listen, faith is the same way. People can't see when you're exercising your faith. Nobody has to even know that you're exercising your faith. 
But I, I guarantee you this morning, if you keep exercising your faith, your faith will grow. And as your faith grows, people will begin to recognize, hey, it's something different about that young man. It's something different about that young lady. I, I, I see their courage beginning to grow. I see uh, their countenance beginning to grow. That, that's something. Listen, it's all about your faith. You exercising your faith allows your faith to grow. And when it grows, people recognize it. And it opens up what? An opportunity for them to come and say, hey, what are you doing? That's got you looking so blessed. Can I get a witness this morning? Yes, your faith, it must be exercised. And you work it. You work your faith through love. But lastly, can I tell somebody this morning that faith is a foretaste of heaven. Hmm. Faith is a foretaste of heaven. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter and the fifth verse. And I want to, once again, I want to read from the New International Version because I like the wording there. It says, now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Listen, here's what that, that says. Faith says, I am cashing in on a guarantee that God has promised me. Let me say that again for somebody. Listen, I'm cashing in. You all know what cashing in is. Uh, listen, I'm cashing in on a guarantee that God has promised me. When God, when God, when, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and your Master, let me walk a little bit. God share his spirit with you. And in him doing that, he really gave you a guarantee both for then and for the days to come. He says for right now, he says, listen, I'm with you. Each and every day of your life. That's the right now part. But he also says, listen, even though I'm with you right here, I, listen, I expect to see you at the finish line. That's a guarantee. And when you demonstrate your faith, all you're doing is cashing in on the guarantee that God has, has planted. Listen, listen. It, you know that 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 whatever may come your way, you're not there by yourself. When you get to the point in your life where you can where you can deal with stuff because you know that God has already guaranteed the outcome, that's when you're demonstrating faith in Jesus Christ and what He has promised. And not what anyone else has promised. Listen, let me tell you something. I, I've had to, I've had to, I've had some rough days. Well, I've had to so much faith in people, in situations, or things that were that were in my environment. Even though those things were there, I had to stop and realize how I ended up where I was. And when we stop and we, we stop and we realize that, that God has placed us in, in the predicaments that we're in, God is there with us and, and, and he, we're not there alone. Listen, faith begins to take its place and, and take us by the hand and say, come on, you can make it farther. Come on, you can move a little bit farther. Come on, you, you don't have to stop here, come on. Don't, don't leave your mind here. Come on, walk with me just a little while. Because listen, I've promised you victory in the end. That's motivation for us not to stop, my, my sisters and brothers. A working faith, that's why James says, even so faith, if it had not works, it's dead. Listen, listen, you cannot. Just sit around 
and wait on things to happen. On a lot of things that we are sitting around waiting to happen, God is waiting on us to happen. He's waiting on us to move. He's waiting on us to say, Lord, take me by the hand. I may have fallen, but pick me up. I may be laying down, but prop me up. I may not be able to see my way, but fix my glasses so that I may fix my vision so that I may see you in the way in which I need to go. I'm not sure I understand. He's, he's waiting on he's waiting on us this morning. He's waiting on us to work through the faith that we say that we have in him. Listen. You cannot demonstrate something that you don't have. You cannot depend on a connection that is just not there. That connection must be there between you and your Lord and your Savior and your Master in order for you to cash in on the faith that he shares with us. You cannot do that if you don't have a relationship with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, you must be in the mind frame that says, you know, I believe. Yes, I believe that he died upon the cross for my sins. I believe that he was taken from that cross and buried in a bar or two. But I also believe that he did not stay there. I believe that on that third day morning, he rose, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. I believe that. You know, my sisters and brothers, if you believe that this morning, or if you believe that this morning, you have not had an opportunity to confess that you believe that. You not made that connection to be in the family of Christ. Please don't hesitate this morning to get in contact with someone here at Mount Harmony, whether it's our pastor, one of the associate ministers, one of the deacons, the members, it does not matter. Make that contact. Say, I heard a message this morning talking about faith. I want that same type of faith. I want to grow my faith in that same manner. And when you do that, and you allow someone to share the plan of salvation with you. You too can be a part of this body of Christ. And I pray that if you heard this message this morning that, and, and you have not done that, that something will, will prick your heart and, ask, and make you ask that question, what must I do to be saved? Father God, we thank you this morning for the word. We pray, Master, that it has not fallen on deaf ears and hardened hearts, but yet, Master, that it has fallen to one that might be able to carry it from beyond these four while sharing it one with another, that one might come asking, what must I do to be saved? Master, we pray your blessings upon us as we continue to deliver your word, and we pray that you would forever be with us, even unto the end of these days. These blessings we pray in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.